You can use pocket notebooks in a lot of different ways, but I like to use mine as a catch-all to capture all my best ideas. I've been using pocket notebooks as catch-alls for about 10 years, and it's saved my life. Is that too strong? It, pocket notebooks have saved my mind, and it's not much of a life without a mind. So yes, pocket notebooks have saved my life. Hey, welcome to Park Notes. I'm Parker Sedicase. I'm a graduate student in philosophy, and I'm here to help you study and think more deeply. In this video, I'm going to help you... What am I going to help you do? In this video, hang on one sec. In this video, I'm going to do four things. One, I'm going to show you how I use pocket notebooks as a catch-all system to collect my thoughts every day. Two, I'll show you what I do with my thoughts after they've been collected. What do I where do I disperse them? Three, I'll address objections to analog pocket notebooks. And four, I'll show you which brands of pocket notebooks I like best and why. So make sure you watch the whole video so you can become an expert in keeping a pocket notebook. Ah, cool, it was all here in my pocket notebook. See what I did? Let's jump in. Back in 2013, I started thinking more deeply. I started my quest to become a philosopher and I started having my own ideas. As I began reading more philosophy, I started having ideas of my own, and I would try to hold on to those ideas in my mind throughout the day. I tried to reflect on them and ruminate on them to make them like part of who I am so that I didn't lose that idea. But as I started having more and more ideas, I realized this system is no good because before I would go to bed, all these ideas would come rushing back to the forefront of my mind, fighting each other for space in my brain. There were so many nights when I would lay in bed literally for hours trying to get my thoughts clear and trying to remember all the ideas I had throughout the day. It was a nightmare. But then I discovered pocket notebooks and how I can use them as a catch-all for all of my ideas throughout the day. It all started with the Saddleback Notebook. I found it on Amazon back when they used to sell on Amazon. And the picture showed this exact thing. I thought that it came with a notebook and it didn't. So I got the leather notebook cover and then for the next week I went out trying to find the perfect notebook to fit in here and I discovered that is a moleskin pocket notebook. It was actually this exact one back in 2013 and it is a Star Wars themed one so I think it's like Tatooine on here. It's kind of cool but I like I like the all black ones. Now the idea behind a pocket notebook as a catch-all system is super, super simple. You get yourself a notebook. It doesn't have to be a loic term or a moleskin. Get yourself any kind of notebook and glue it to yourself. This goes with you everywhere you go. And when you have a good idea, you open up your notebook and you write it in there. This is like your working memory, your external brain. This is where you put your ideas so you don't lose them. So I put all sorts of ideas in here. To-do lists that I don't want to forget about, good ideas for podcast episodes or blog posts or just ideas that I want to chew on and think through, future park note videos, key concepts that I want to turn into multiple channel videos and content, philosophical ideas, personal notes on who I am and why I think that way, life goals. If it's an idea that I don't want to lose, it's going in my pocket notebook catch-all. So let me give you an example. I've been chewing on this idea of an external mind for a long time. External minds and pocket notebooks. I know that looks bad to you guys, but this is a pocket notebook. I, these are pretty sloppy notes because usually I'm writing them on the go and they don't have to be perfect. You just have to be able to interpret them. It doesn't matter if the museum curator 200 years from now understands it, that's their problem. So first things first, I will put down the idea. I will block that out. This is what this page is about. I will put down the date so I know when I had this idea. And then I'll give myself enough of the idea here for me to reflect on later. Does my mind extend into my pocket journals? So that's the question. Why would I even think that? Well, if these represent the past 10 years of my working memory, then like if you had these and you could interpret what I was saying and actually read them if they were legible, which they're not, then you would have like an inside look into my brain. Or would you have an inside look into my mind? Is your mind just your brain? Are you your thoughts? If so, then my mind is extended into these notebooks. And that has some implications for personal identity. It reminds me of John Locke's theory of personal identity, which emphasizes psychological continuity or memories. What makes you the same you? Well, you remember a past version of you, and that version remembers another past. And you have these memory chains going all the way back to when you began being a person. What does it mean to be the same person? You have a certain amount of psychological continuity over time. But a possible counterexample to that would maybe be my notebook. Well, John Locke, if psychological continuity is a marker of personal identity, then am I in these notebooks? That's a question I have, and that's, that's what I'm gonna write down in my pocket notebook. So I give myself different markers to help jog my memory in the future. So it's as simple as that. Pocket notebooks function like an external 
working memory. It helps you offload your ideas and come back to them when you have time to think about them more. Now I can sleep at night knowing I've captured my ideas and I can reflect on them whenever I want to. Once I have my ideas captured in my capture system, which is just a pocket notebook, I will reflect on them throughout the day when I get a chance and I'll add them to different notebooks that I use for different purposes. So if it's a time sensitive task, I'm going to put it in my bullet journal slash time blocking log. If I think it's a really good idea, then it goes in my good idea catch all. I'll give it a more detailed explanation here. I may look up some different resources and put page numbers and look up concepts and definitions and detail that a bit more in my good idea catch all. I could also move it into my deep thinking philosophy journal and take it with me to a coffee shop to ruminate, to reflect, to chew on this idea with no external resources, but just my own mind. I recently did a YouTube video about that. You can find that somewhere up here. And if it's a good idea for public philosophy, for YouTube, for Substack, for anything like that, it goes in my public philosophy notebook. So I realize that this is highly compartmentalized. You don't have to use as many as I do. I'm a weirdo, but I love compartmentalizing my ideas. Now, I also recognize that a lot of people are going to say this is inefficient. Digital systems are much faster. You can do a word search and find your ideas much more quickly. But the difference between an analog system like a notebook and a digital system like my cell phone is that my cell phone has all these icons that are trying to draw my attention to them instead of my notes. Now, this is a picture of Kang the Conqueror, and I want to be all jacked like this, so I have it as my home screen for motivation. Again, like I said, I'm weird, so no surprise there. This is a pretty light day for me, but I still have all these alerts calling out to me. Check your email, check your calendar, check your text. Me, 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 look at me, give me attention. My Galaxy Note has a bunch of other things that are calling out to me, beckoning me, trying to steal my attention. And so even though I have this pretty little stylus and I can create all these notes, I forget about checking my notes in here because I have so many other things to think about. When I look at my phone, I don't see a notepad, I don't see a notebook, I don't see thoughts. I see a billion different things, but I don't see my ideas. When I look at my notebook, I see my ideas. That's all that this is meant for. So going analog helps me stay focused. It helps me reflect on my own ideas. Now, some of these will turn into philosophy papers. And yeah, I'll put those in a digital system, but they start out as analog notes in my pocket notebook. And they're often shuffled around in my other analog notebooks until they're ready for the limelight. So the concern of inefficiency is not a big one for me because in my mind, thinking is not about efficiency. It's about owning those ideas. It's about working through them, chewing on them, getting to the truth, understanding what you believe and why you believe it. But it's worth taking time to go slow with your own thoughts, to chew on them, to reflect on them, to get clear on what you mean, to give reasons for what you believe and why you believe it. It's okay to take some time. It's okay to look this up. It's okay to write the same entry multiple times, to go back and edit it, to add marginalia, to cross things off, to stay with an idea and really, really chew on it. So if you're worried about efficiency, then I'm giving you permission to go analog and to give yourself time to think. So while the efficiency concern is not that big a deal for me, there are other worries. One of the worries is when you use a pocket notebook, you put your ideas in here and you outmode them out of mind, out of sight, right? You get this false sense of completion that the idea is done. I have it captured. I have it logged in my catch all. And so I'm done with it. But so often your ideas are unfinished. They're half baked. They need to be chewed on. They need to be remembered. They need to be recalled and reflected and ruminated on throughout the day. And so you could accidentally be putting your ideas in here and forgetting about them and leaving them half done. We want to offload our ideas for the time being, but we don't want to outmode them. We don't want them to be gone forever. We don't want to set them aside and overlook them. The best way to avoid that is to thumb through your notebook multiple times throughout the day and get in the habit of checking it before bed. That way you are refreshing your mind. You're bringing those ideas back to the forefront of your mind throughout the day when you have a chance to think about them more. So you want to offload, but you don't want to outmode. Now, like I said, I started with moleskin notebooks, but now I've been trying out these Leuchtturm 1917s. I like these squared ones, but I'm also going to try out the dotted ones. Again, you don't have to use these ones. These are just the ones that I like. If you do want to use the ones that I use, check the description and use those links that will help support this channel. The Leuchtturm is going to be just a little bit bigger than the moleskin. Here I have some unopened ones for you. So there's a size comparison. The Leuk term has some margins for you to put the date, and it also includes page numbers. The moleskin doesn't. Some people like that more than that. It was all personal preference. I'm also trying out this Murdy Creative 
pocket notebook. Here's a moleskin in here. This is a beautiful leather cover with these leather clasps and a Parker pen locks everything all together. It's pretty cool. I've also found a bunch of pocket notebooks on Etsy with different brands of paper. I don't really like them all that much, but my friends and family have bought them for me and I can't say no to a pocket notebook. So for my daily carry lately, I'm using this Loic Term 1917 A6. It's a squared or grid notebook. I really, really dig this. It's got two ribbons so you can mark two different places to be thinking about your thoughts. I found this leather cover from Etsy. I'm not super thrilled about it, so I'm not going to link in the description or anything like that, but it does fit this Pilot G2 pen, which is kind of nice. So that's the daily carry, but for special occasions, when this thing is too big for me, I will use a field notes book. When I'm performing a wedding or, or really any time I'm wearing a suit and I have a breast pocket, I will slip that into there. So between the two of these, I'm carrying a pocket notebook with me everywhere I go. Okay, so that's how I use a pocket notebook as a capture system to collect my thoughts wherever I am every single day. But now I want to hear from you guys. Have you ever kept a pocket notebook? And if so, how does your method differ from mine? Make sure to leave me a comment so other people can see your advice too. Also, if you have a favorite brand, let me know in the comments so I can check those out. Or if you like the ones I mentioned, go ahead and let me know so I don't have to keep looking. And then I need your help. Do you think my mind is extended into my pocket notebooks? Why or why not? If you guys benefited from this video, if you learned something, if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave me a like and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any videos on study habits and tips and tricks and crazy weird philosophical thought experiments. All right, I'll catch you next time.